Hey, can I be honest with you for just a second? <laughs> I love pasta. One of the reasons I was 280 pounds before, and I will be very honest with you when I say that although I wish I could say there were the perfect alternatives for pasta, nothing beats real pasta. Now, it's not a part of my life anymore. I had to say goodbye. I had to cut ties. But I'm never going to say that any pasta alternative is as tasty and good as real just pasta. All right. Now that I got that off my chest, there are really good alternatives. And if you're following any kind of healthy lifestyle, in this particular case, I'm sure many of you that are watching this video are following a low carb or ketogenic diet. And that's probably why you want pasta alternatives. But the thing is, is that these alternatives work for anybody. You don't have to just be doing keto. So I'm not even going to make it keto focused. However, if you are doing keto, you already know the benefits of it being low carb. So that's a given. Hey, I do want to make sure you hit the red subscribe button and then hit the bell icon. Okay, that's going to allow you to turn on notifications and turn on all notifications. We have educational content coming out daily. We are absolutely pumping out high quality content. I don't want you to miss a beat, so please subscribe. Okay, the first one that makes the list is simple spaghetti squash. Now, I don't want you to turn off this video because you think this is going to be very basic because it's going to get really interesting. But I had to start off with one that people know. Now, spaghetti squash is just that basic squash that you, you heat up, you microwave, you broil, you bake, whatever, and then you take a fork and you string out the strands of the fibers to get like a spaghetti-like substance. Those of you that eat spaghetti squash know that it doesn't really taste like spaghetti. It's more just a delivery system for marinara sauce, but still, it does the trick. Now, the reason that spaghetti squash does make my list, and I will say every single product and food on this list is something I like. They all have their pros and cons though. Okay, so the big benefit of the spaghetti squash is the micronutrient profile. Okay, very, very rich in the micronutrients. Out of all the ones that I'm talking about today, it has the most diverse micronutrient profile, meaning you're getting lots of vitamins. You're getting very powerful antioxidant effects. But it's also got a very low GI. It's got a GI of 20 or less, which means the glycemic index is very low. So if you're not doing keto, the likelihood of it really just affecting your blood sugar in a bad way is very low. You'd have to eat a ton of it. And if you are doing a low carb diet, then it's again, so low glycemic, you're not gonna get a big blood sugar response. So you're all good. Now, interesting study, the Korean Journal of Food Sciences and Technology published something that took a look at squash. Okay, and they found that the flavonoid extracts in squash were so powerful that they actually inhibited the growth of colon cancer and lung cancer cells in test tube studies. Now, those of you that want to just you know, scrutinize me, you're gonna say, well, this is test tube studies. The point isn't to say that spaghetti squash is gonna cure cancer. I'm not saying that at all. The point is that spaghetti squash has a very powerful, very powerful antioxidant profile to the point that if you were to take the extracts of the flavonoids that are in it, it can actually have a positive effect like that. Now, the other thing that I really like about spaghetti squash is if you are someone that's just trying to boost the overall antioxidant profile of your body, maybe you're someone that's done some damage to your body in the past, maybe you did a lot of drinking, smoking, things like that, you just want to re recoup. Well, it's very high in quercetin, which is something that's going to help boost glutathione. Now, glutathione is the natural antioxidant that's in your body. It's like the master antioxidant. And you want to do everything you can to boost that. You have indirect antioxidants that come in externally and neutralize things, but then you have things like quercetin that come in and reinforce your body's natural antioxidant properties. That's what you want. You want your body's inherent antioxidant ability to be upregulated because that is your antioxidant capability that is programmed for your body. Next up on the list, zoodles. All right, so we got zoodles. We got zucchini that has been brought into a noodle form. That's all it is. It's nothing crazy, okay? It's basically grated or extruded zucchini. Why does it make the list? Well, it makes the list because it's kind of slim pickings, but it also makes the list because it's very high in pectin. Why is pectin important? It's a very specific kind of fiber that does seem to pull out a lot of toxins out of the intestinal tract in some ways. Now, that's important, but the other cool thing is super high in vitamin C in the sense that you don't get a lot of vitamin C from veggies. You usually get them from fruits, which are loaded with sugar. Now, this is all fine and dandy, but the downside with the zoodles is gonna be that, yes, they're a little bit higher carbohydrate content, and unless you can find them in a prepackaged form, you need to buy an expensive KitchenAid to extrude them and make them like that. Additionally, when we look at spaghetti squash, same kind of thing, complicated. You have to cook it, you have to do this. It actually makes more of a mess than just forgetting about it all together and just blowing your diet and having pasta, right? 
The next one is a very unique one that you probably haven't heard of before because it's pretty new and pretty cutting edge, which is always what I like to do with my videos. That is going to be pasta that is made from hearts of palm. Okay, not to be confused with artichoke hearts. People get those confused all the time. Hearts of palm is like the center of a palm tree, kind of, it's an interesting thing. But anyhow, you can get noodles that are made from hearts of palm. Really interesting stuff. Here's why they make my list. First of all, they're unique. Exceptionally low carb, so you're looking at two to three grams of net, uh, net carbs in these things. High fiber, low carb, just a great mix. But the reason they make the list is because of a couple of unique things. The mineral profile, okay? We have potassium, we have zinc, and we have copper. Potassium is great, but I wanna focus on zinc and copper for a second. Zinc is really, really important to activating thyroid receptors in cells. You have thyroid hormone, which is basically our metabolism and our thyroid, but it has to bind to receptors in cells. If we don't have zinc, then that doesn't activate. We can't really use it. So we need zinc for that to occur, but here's the problem. Okay, normally, if we have zinc, zinc cancels out copper. And then we run into a copper deficiency, which can affect our immune system and affect all kinds of other things. Okay, well that's a problem. Then if we have too much copper, that cancels out zinc, which leads to all kinds of other issues. So we need to have this balance of copper and zinc all the time if we want good immune function and we want good overall recovery. The nice thing is, hearts of palm have high levels of zinc and copper in a very nice ratio. So it makes it kind of the perfect mineral food in that case. But things get really cool when you check out a study that was published in the Journal of Agriculture and Food Chemistry. Okay, so they wanted to investigate what hearts of palm were good for from sort of an antioxidant and just general health standpoint. Well, guess what they found? Chlorogenic acid, okay? It is something that is normally found in relatively small amounts in coffee. Now, why am I mentioning this? Well, simply because when you're already looking at controlling your carbohydrate intake, obviously you wanna reduce how much glucose and carbs are absorbed. Well, chlorogenic acid inhibits something called alpha-glucosidase, which is something that allows glucose to be absorbed. So when that's inhibiting it, you actually stop some of the absorption of glucose. You're not gonna stop it altogether, but you could slow down the absorption of glucose out of your intestinal tract. That means less glucose affecting your body, less blood glucose. So already, if you take hearts of palm pasta, and maybe you put some tomatoes that have some carbs on it, you know, something like that, well, you're gonna reduce the potential impact of those simply because of the chlorogenic acid. I mean, it's somewhat negligible, but it's really cool and worth mentioning when you reference the science. Now, additionally, chlorogenic acid has been shown to upregulate what is called PPAR alpha, something I talk about a lot in my videos, which is a nerdy scientific thing that talks about how our body increases uncoupling proteins to ultimately burn more fat and create more heat. So yes, I think this one actually is pretty darn unique, especially considering how new it is. If you guys wanna check it out, again, it's something that I discovered just a couple of months ago, so really, really just hot on it still. I put a link down below. The company is called Natural Heaven. They're the main ones that create it. You don't have to cook it or anything. You just heat it up, and you can get it in spaghetti form or angel hair form. So special link down below for those of you that wanna try out Natural Heaven Hearts of Palm Pasta. They're, they're showing up in a lot of retail stores and things like that, mainly on the East Coast. I haven't seen them in retail stores on the West Coast, but you can get it on Amazon or you can just get it straight up from them. So I'll put a link down below, that way you you guys can check them out and just give it a shot for yourself. I don't know, it's, it's good to try all of these, right? Now we talk shirataki noodles, which some of you have heard before, okay? More commonly referred to as the miracle noodle. Okay, it's made from the cognac root. Okay, I love shirataki noodles. I love the whole process of this. Uh, it's just a whole different ball game with where you get the benefit, right? So basically there's something in it called glucomannan fiber. Glucomannan fiber is highly, highly soluble. It can hold 50 times its weight in water. So what this means is it's almost a, just a, no calorie food in essence. It has like no effect on your body, like practically no metabolic effect. It's just fiber. So pros and cons. Pros being it's calorie neutral, like it doesn't do anything. Cons being it can cause some digestive upset if you're not accustomed to it. But it's just something interesting to play around with. There's a study that was published in Diabetes Research and Clinical Practice that found that Patients that consumed glucomannan fiber for four weeks ended up having reduced levels of fasting ghrelin levels. Okay, that means that their overall levels of hunger were lower consistently. Ghrelin is the hunger hormone. So it looks like by having so much fiber, it eventually just suppresses that hunger hormone, which is really, really cool stuff. So if you're not catching the drift of what I'm talking about here, you probably wanna just have a diverse profile of all of these. You just need to find the ones that are convenient for you. Okay, spaghetti, squash, and soodles aren't exactly convenient and they're pretty perishable, whereas like the hearts of palm comes in, you know, packs that you can take with you on the road. Shirataki noodles, same kind of ball game. It's just weighing out what you actually want. 
Next up is one that's a little bit more of a bonus mention. I don't know if a lot of people would enjoy the taste or the texture of this one, but it's one that I enjoy from time to time, and it's kelp or seaweed noodles. Very nutrient rich and very high in iodine, which is a mineral that quite frankly is hard to get unless you're consuming iodized salt. I don't like iodized salt because it's stripped of all the other minerals and it's usually bleached and it usually ends up having so much adulteration it's not good. So it's not the best way to get iodine in my opinion. Getting iodine from a natural source like kelp or seaweed is always going to be the best. So if you're concerned with thyroid health, iodine is something you probably want to pay attention to. You see, we need iodine to convert the T4 form of thyroid into the active triiodothyronine, which is T3. We need that T4 to T3 conversion. Iodine is required for that. So kelp, seaweed noodles are great for that. Now, where are you gonna get it? You can usually find it at you know, the grocery store. You can usually get it online. The hard part is it's crunchy slash chewy slash rubbery. Not everybody likes it, and I would say it's a very acquired taste. But if you're really trying to cram your iodine, you're really trying to get sort of these, uh, almost these micronutrients that are usually in a marine setting, then yeah, I definitely encourage checking it out. But I'm putting it as a bonus because I don't think it's realistically an alternative for most people. It's more of a supplement that you might have with an Asian dish or something like that. So there we have it, right? We've got spaghetti squash, we've got zoodles, we've got hearts of palm natural heaven noodles, we've got shirataki noodles, and we've got kelp noodles. I think here you've got the breakdown. Okay, these are things that are gonna work for a low carb alternative. Now, could we break down further and get into the different kinds of like uh, teff and quinoa noodles and lentil noodles? Absolutely we can. But this was supposed to be geared towards getting the lowest caloric impact noodles. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.